Welcome back to another action figure review. In this review, we're going to take a look at the 2012 G.I. Joe Retaliation Blind Master action figure, part of the movie line. This is the packaging it comes in. At the top, we have the Roblox and Snake Eyes representation from the movie. We have the G.I. Joe movie logo across the top of the card. We have a bubble showing the Blind Master figure and most of his accessories. Down at the bottom, we have the Blind Master nameplate and the Arashi Kagi logo. These are ages, recommended for ages 4 and up, and they are made by Hasbro. And mourning for choking hazards, small parts, not for children under 3 years of age. They have very unique design packaging. Square on one end and then rounds off on the other. Pretty cool. On the side of packaging, it says G.I. Joe is the world's greatest special arts fighting force with top secret ninja training from the world's toughest masters. Led by Ultimate Ninja Commando Roblox. <laughs> These elite heroes defend the globe from the evil forces of Cobra. You know, if anybody's out there is a G.I. Joe fan like me, like, this gimmicky crap is this ridiculous. Led by the Ultimate Ninja Commando. Roblox, really. First of all, first place, Roblox is not a ninja, anywhere near Ninja Commando. So, you know, you keep your mythologies right, Hasbro. Back at packaging, here at the top, the Blind Master is a wise and mysterious leader of the Arashikage clan, Ninja clan, who sees what others can't. He is the toughest of the masters and has trained Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow in Camp Arashikage other also known as Jinx. In the secret ninja arts, he is skilled with multiple weapons including a bladed shield and flying saw and the legendary nine ring sword. Here is a few of the product shots of the figure and his accessories. We have ninja shield with hidden blades. So is it a shield or is it a hat? Guess it's both. Very cool. Over here we have some of the other figures. Here's Kimura Shikage, the Dark Ninja, Cyber Ninja, and Lady J. So let's go ahead and take a look at the figure. And also before we start here, it's like, it said that he was the toughest master. Yeah, I don't think so. Other masters, like the hard master. This is sub subjective to your opinion, I guess. We have an African-American ma um, master, we want to call him. He has a black hair, black beard. He's blind with white eyes. Pretty nice for, uh, going for that blind look. She does have his pupil pupils. It's like a flat black gi or robe, or you want to call it black pants, like a flat black. Um, then he has some white trim throughout around his top of his gi and on his robe piece here. Then he's white shin pads, black string. Kind of looks like they forgot to paint half that string. He has the Russia Cargo logo on the side of his arm. He has the white trim around the top of his glove and around the top of his hand guard. It's not really a glove, so. In the back of the figure we have a pouch and then we have it's like a type of holster for something. It doesn't have a gun, so and on the very back if you can see he does have a hole in his back, but he has the very large painted Arashi Kage um emblem on his back or symbol. 
Then he sports this gold sash over his, or strap over his chest. We have the Oscar logo here. We have some black parts here. We have a pig right there. Not sure what that's for either. Probably just from kit bashing these figures. So for the articulation, we have the head is on the ball joint, rotates 360. Uh, we have a tad bit up. That's about it. Eh, a tad bit side to side. Arms are on the ball joint, they rotate 360. We have Ben and Bobas. And also we have a elbow swivel here on both arms, they swivel 360. We are not going to get a 90 degree bend out of that arm or that one either. We kind of have an ab crunch. Also a swivel. We're going to have a hard time utilizing the most important part in my opinion if the G.I. Joe's the ability to sit and especially in vehicles. Since G.I. Joe is rich in vehicles we have this very cloth it's not a cloth, it's a hard plastic waist skirt. So, you know, you're not going to get his legs up pretty much at all. And it kind of does the uh, bendable and double drain knees kind of out the window because how, how long it is. But you can bend them if you work it around. We have a swivel on the ankles. And down. And nope, this is a down, pivot down. Pretty nice looking figure from the movie. I think this is a kit bash strap from one of Storm Shadow figures. Okay, he likes to stand very well either. We're pretty much there for now. One of his accessories we have a sculpted dog tag. We have a hole here drilled out so maybe you can put it on like a chain if you wanted to keep him on there. There's a peg for his foot. We have that throwing ring blade on a string. On this side we have a, a round ring. Not sure where the ring goes. Definitely not gonna fit on that peg. Nope. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is for. Probably nothing. Pretty cool accessory, something different. And we have a black pole or a club nightstick. You know what you're going to call it. Just more than black plastic. You get one of those. You get a legendary ring sword. Done in all gold plastic. If you guys ever see um, Into the Badlands, one of the characters on that show, I think of season two maybe. I think there's only three seasons of that show. It's a pretty good show. Check it out if you want to. Uh, there is a warrior on there that has this type of sword. It's very cool. Recent in the movie. So it has like a wood grain handle sculpted into it. Then we have a staff or a walking stick. Some holes throughout there. Just on the top, two pieces. That is kind of bent at an angle. And what's cool about this is uh, 
it doubles as a spear, has a sword blade inside. And if you keep this on, you can see sometimes the paint sticks to the inside and you may lose some of your silver paint. But that is the nature of the beast for painted weapons like that, especially with the tolerance too tight. He also comes with this. This is why my favorite stuff right here. I love hockey masks. They're, they're amazing. I do like this. Kind of gives you a Call of Duty ghost feel to it. But there are holes for his eyes. You can see that. There is white and green paint on his, on the black mask. And it does fit him quite well. As you can see. I do like that mask. That's really cool. And let's talk about the shield that they're calling it slash hat. Accessory. It's done in gold. Point on top. It's not sharp. It's rounded off. And then on the bottom we have a place for I would call a chin strap, but it has to be doubled as a arm strap to hold it as a shield. And you can see inside there there are the blades that are hidden. They do pop out. So you can do many things with this accessory, which is, you know, kind of cool, I guess, gives you options. You know, you can use as a hat, a shield, but there's not really a good way to hold this weapon. Um, because shooting ain't got no really handle. I mean, it's just going to flop around, fall off, um, unless you find a way to, you know, get him the to wedge it in there, maybe through his elbow or something like that. But it's not very, uh, very pliable for me as a shield. But it does look pretty good as a one of those wicked hats that um, some of those old time masters like to use bladed hats. Those look really cool. Also, you know, in your play for playing around with your fighting ninjas or whatever you want to do, you, you know, he can do a kind of loud move and phew, throw this bad boy. It comes back to him. Or uh, somebody else. It comes back to him. And on his head. <laughs> you know, pretty cool idea, I guess. It's different. I've never seen an accessory like this before, so it's kind of whole, cool to have in your accessory arsenal. See here. See how he holds his sword. Oh, he holds it pretty good. I'm gonna put this mask back on because this is so cool. I have a bunch of these for customs. Find some generic soldiers and put them on. Pretty wild. Here he is with his little nice stick. Now this looks like a thug. Something like the purge or something. And we have his walking stick. So let's see where we want to stick it so we can get a little high on it. That's cool. Let's see if we can uh, get him to hold it. Let's see, weapon. 
just like the pop out of his hand set. I think the diameter is a little bigger, bigger than the actual hand sculpt, but um, it'll work. Get it in there. <laughs> so close, right? So close. Uh, one hand pops out, one hand pops on, and vice versa. Well, let me try this one more time. It's not really on her, but if you sit and play with it, you can, probably, you can get it. So I don't know what this is for. That's all of his accessories. Um, there's a hole in the bottom. Stick a pole in there, maybe. Yeah, that the angle ain't gonna work out very well. No, there's really nothing that fits in there. So, other than that, and you can't put a sword in here because of the rings. You're gonna risk bending your sword. And it's a cool accessories. I'll take an extra one of these and paint, paint the rings on these things. That'd be cool. Nice. Let's see if it's on a stand. It's a word placement for those pegs. But he fits perfectly. Um, for some comparisons, uh, here he is with a George White figure. Here he is with a High Toys figure. So he did scale pretty good with all the figure outs. So you could use them on the figure lines. Pretty cool. So they said these were made in 2012 for the movie line. It's pretty cool. Still, you can still pick this guy up for um, 20, 25 bucks on the third market websites, Amazon, eBay, stuff like that. They're still out there. Um, so if you're interested in buying one of these figures, that's about all I got for you guys today on the uh, Blind Master. Do I recommend it? I'd recommend it for, you know, 10, 12 bucks that it came out for. Um, overall, I like the mask. Accessories are pretty cool. It's nice to see a good bit of ninja accessories. Don't know what the peg's for. Don't know what that's for. Don't like this. If you're going to do this on a figure, it should be soft goods, in my opinion. That way you still get the articulation. Why spend the money in manufacturing uh, uh, joints for articulation if you're going to just, you can't use it. And that is not removable. So, but overall, it's not bad for a $10 figure. But any more than that, I and it's going to be on, you know, your reasoning, you know, cleaning your collection, having them all, whatever, you know, whatever you, you judges, your judgment is. So, hope you guys like this look at this 2012 G.I. Joe Blind Master. If you did, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate it. And, uh, as always, guys, happy collecting, and thanks for watching.